Hey guys, welcome back. I have Daniel back again uh, for another DAC session where we're going to be diving into another unknown topic for myself, but something cool that we're going to get to learn today. So Daniel, thanks for coming back on again. I'm excited to continue this series. And um, what is the topic that we're going to be going over today related to DACs? Yes. Uh, hi, Reed. Uh, thanks for having me here. Mm -hmm. Today, we're going to talk about some differences between, I guess, um, blanks, uh, zeros, and nulls in SQL, um, that's a broad topic, I guess. So let me just show you the formula right away. Yeah. Uh, here it is. I am zooming in, hopefully it's readable now. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's the pattern that I see from time to time. And uh, here actually it's uh, kind of nice. And you've got measures here, mm -hmm. instead of just the same code repeated. And uh, you can you can see our old foe calculate in a measure without any filters from mm -hmm. one of the previous uh, episodes. <laughs> and this is a uh, and this is a measure too. The only time you might actually need it is if you're doing potentially the calculated column, which we've discussed before. But because it's a measure without it without any filter change or uh, addition or modification, it's not needed in here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. So yeah, this formula is exactly what I saw in real life. I decided not to change it. Um, I guess I could uh, by getting rid of calculate. But yeah, that's exactly what I encountered. And I decided to copy this here. Uh, so yeah, um, other than the calculate thing, what else uh, do you see here? <clears throat> well, I, I can step through kind of like, I, I think I know what the end result honestly needs needs to be, which is really easy to, to, to solve for this. I, I think Marco and Roberto have blogged about how to how to get rid of blanks. but. Uh, number one is we have we have repeating uh, every of these measures is repeated twice. So at a minimum, those can be declared as a variable at the top, just, and they can reference it twice. So each one of those sales system ones, two, three, fours could be a variable to get rid of uh, the the duplication because that will be a performance increase. Calculate doesn't need to be in there, uh, but all of this results to basically just never show blank because any time empty or some kind of empty or or it's, it's resulting to um, empty null blank however you call it, it always uh, translates into display as blank on the page. Like, and it's annoyingly uh, single value cards, there's no option to say show blanks as zero. It would be a great built-in feature to any visual. Blanks as zero should be a setting on the visual as a format. It should not have to be accounted yeah. for in the measure. But the workaround to all of this, um, would you, you could, I would think you could just add zero to any of these, just plus zero. Um, uh, potentially as, a, as an output to remove the, the need to if is just... Uh, um, you you are checking between a few of those, but that that would at least be I would think one possible solution is just adding a zero to the uh to it rather than having to do an if check. Yeah, I completely agree with you, and um, uh, you're right. So we can get rid of calculate. I press Control Shift L to select all instances that are uh, the same. Now I'll just uh, quickly get rid of. And as you're doing this, that, of course, okay. like multiple ifs can always then be translated to switch trues. Um. As well, just as like a for you know sint, uh, syntax sugar to make it easier to read and just just a better way of writing it, so you don't have to have a bunch of extra parentheses at the end to close them all the nested ifs off. Yep. And uh, yeah, you're right. I think we can just get away with uh, adding all these together and yeah, adding a zero here. There we go. So, and that's gonna provide the same result. Um, because, well, what is this measure doing? Just like you said, we're checking if it's blank, then mm -hmm. display zero. Otherwise, display that measure. Like there's no use uh, in this. You can just add them all and add yep. a zero if you really want a zero in the end. Although you mentioned an article by SQL BI and uh, might be a good idea to provide a uh, link to it because that it's not always that simple, right? Like if you just add a zero, it means Whenever you display this measure, it will have some result, even if there is no data. Right? Yes, exactly. The... Um, like it, you, you hit it on. So if you put this into a chart or a table or anything else, it, it like a calendar table as an example, it could blow out the 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 the, the columns in a in a chart or the rows. Um, the, the I've the, the, some of the workarounds that I've had for that, depending on you know if I end up needing a value that might end up causing repeating rows, I'll I'll potentially do like some kind of a count row check a really like clean quick calculation to determine 
is there actual proper context where otherwise this row really should be displaying real world data rather than just zero? And I, you know, that might get included in, in an if statement to kind of to check to basically see if there is actual integrity for this really should be a category with a zero that also would have originally returned some value versus like the other, you know, 3000 rows, which are truly empty, but you've now ended up with this, um, you know, a massive table or, or chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. Something else I wanted to discuss in this example, because it uh, yeah. seems uh, <laughs> kind of simple. I wanted to like, maybe ask you, why do you think people write DAX like that? Like, what's the thinking behind it? This way, or uh, so which, which part is it? Is it related to the if, uh, if zero statement, or is it the calculate part? Uh, calculate uh, is something we've covered uh, before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, if, the if part, why do people write DAX like this? I mean, it it comes from an Excel world, you know. Uh, I I I mean that that's I mean back in the day, I used to honestly do kind of a, if 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 this thing uh, is blank, and like the other way you can write it is just you know the the measure equals and the actual uh, function of blank, same thing. Uh, yeah. But you know, I, I think it was probably the SQL BI article that that was the one to recognize. Oh yeah, just doing a plus zero. Uh, I believe it, it 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 performs a little bit faster because uh, it's not running the if check. Uh, it ha doesn't have to branch or anything, but. Yeah, I I believe I learned it probably a decade ago, like as an Excel formula to to get rid of that. Is like a, there's if errors or other types of stuff uh, like that that you could use in Excel to get rid of those nasty um, either blanks or you know the the hashtag div for error messages that you might sometimes get as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't have the right answer to my question. I just have a guess, mm -hmm. and uh, my guess is that this formula was written by some SQL professional. And that's like, I think so, because yep. if you come from the SQL world, then you've got nulls. You don't have blanks, you've got nulls. And nulls True. are not blanks in DAX. Because if you add one and null, what do you get? You still get one. Because uh, I mean, there, there, there shouldn't be any nulls at all by the time it gets into the model. Uh, like nulls, nulls, are, nulls exist in Power Query, but everything gets, gets translated to uh, I, I thought basically just an empty cell, uh, like like a blank. Um, once it's actually in the VeriFact engine, unless I'm mistaken, but I, I did not believe that null as a type e existed in the actual VeriFact engine. It only exists like during the transformation processes in Power Query, which it gets translated to blank. No, you're right. Uh, null only exists in Power Query, not in yep. DAX. What I meant was, if ah. you operate in SQL, like let's imagine we're in SQL. <clears throat> yes. One and null, actually, it's the same in Power Query. One plus null is going to oh, be null. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it, exactly. It's, uh, it, it's, a yeah. failed, uh, it's a failed equation. It can't actually do it. Yeah, yeah. and the index is different. One yep. plus blank is one. So the yes. behavior is different. However, people who came from the SQL world, they might still get mm -hmm. accustomed to that, you know, checks, um, to those checks against the uh, null values and stuff. And so yep. they might write it and think, okay, it's the, it's the safe way to write to protect against you know, blanks in this case, even though that's mm. not needed. And also, you, uh, you mentioned um, that is blank is the same as like sales system one equals blank, like yep. the, the function blank. Now, I'd like to make a find po fine point here. Okay. Let me do an example. Just let's do home and enter data and uh, we'll work with uh, text a bit so let's just call this uh, label uh, this is null uh, this is um, empty string uh, this is uh, zero let, let's put it that way um, and uh, actually yeah, get rid of this and uh, we'll just edit this in Power Query so that I can actually produce a, a null mm -hmm. and uh, an empty string. Perfect. And also a zero later. Uh, so we've got label here. Yeah, let's uh, duplicate this. Um, add column, duplicate. Okay, this is going to be a text. Actually, I didn't have to do it, right? I, I could have uh, renamed it here. Exactly. Okay. Now, there you go. I'd like to replace this value and it's going to be 
And mouth, as a quick like reminder this. for people with power queries, it has to be lowercase. Uh, power queries is case sensitive. So if you did a uh, capitalized or uppercase null, it would it, it just comes out as text. That specifically will result to a null um, type. Yes, read it right, as always. Select OK. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now let's do, uh, replace this with an empty string. So just leave it as is. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be an empty string. And this, let's just do a zero. It's still going to be text. I know that's um, for a specific use case. And the use case is mm, I want to make it a number. So let me just uh, again uh, duplicate this. And it's going to be a number. OK. And I'm just going to change the data type to say whole number. OK. So now we get null, null, and zero. OK. Great. Um, now let's, um, let's load this. OK. And select close and apply. OK. And we'll work in the data view. And I've got a bunch of stuff that we don't actually need for this example. And now here's the table. Perfect. And let's call this column is blank. And it's going to be uh, text equals to blank. Yep. Now, what now do we expect to see? Let's, uh, I mean, when basically you do a condition, and uh, we also talked about this in one of our previous videos. Uh, if you can quickly just zoom in while I'm, I'm mentioning it, but <clears throat> a lot of people will actually like have an if statement. They'll do if this is, and then actually say true or false, but it automatically just oh, yeah. results in true or false without having to do with that extra stuff. So for your blanks, um, the uh, I would imagine that the, the, the row one and row two is going to return yes. Uh, the third one is going to return uh, false because uh, nulls get tr uh, converted to blank in um, inside of the tabular model. Read was right. We've got true, true, and false. Now, remember, this is actually not blank. It's an empty string, which is impossible to see with the naked eye. Uh, however, we could do two things. Mm -hmm. First, let's see. Um, actually, I should not have called this is blank because technically it's not is blank. Um, Let's rename this equal to blank. Okay. okay. And we'll do another column called is blank. Yeah, okay. And it's going to be a text. Now it's a bit different. Mm. Uh, yeah. And there's another way. Let's do a column. And it's going to be. Ah, uh, the, the, the double equal, equal like... that, uh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that, that came out. Um, last year. Some, yeah, last year, exactly. The, 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 the yeah. absolute, absolute equal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe the year before. I forget. Not too long ago, anyway. Co COVID so, makes yeah. time weird. So, yeah, I think it was probably in the last few <laughs> years. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. In some okay. cases, yeah. Uh, okay. this uh, can make a difference. So yeah. yeah, just be aware of uh, these things. So, I because again, like I uh, thought, uh, my understanding was that nulls were always converted to blank by the time it enters the model. Um, no, that's right. Yeah, but it, okay. Right. So, so the first row is a true blank. The second one is basically a zero character length text field. Is what that is. So yes. the model does recognize it as like a partial blank but not like an absolutely, mm -hmm. completely, truly empty blank. And I didn't actually realize, I assumed it actually converted them to the exact same, you know, piece of data uh, that, that's in there. So like technically it does recognize that they're different things, um, which I, again, I, I assumed they converted to the same output. So I didn't actually realize that yeah. there was still a, a way to check for differences of those. And let's do one more thing. Okay. And we'll we'll call it number is equal to blank. And that's gonna be a number. Cool. What do we expect to see? 
for this one because you well you are saying equals blank like the the equal to blank column so for the number column but the, yeah yeah and, well, and for yeah, the number column number. that you converted it to an integer and in power query technically both were null before importing to the model the first two rows were null yes. so i would imagine it would be if it's equal to blank i would think it would be the equivalent of, e of the equal to blank column it would be i would think it would be true true false true true false yeah i if we had to bet actually i haven't done it before so i think it's a fair <laughs> bet okay i would bet on true 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 uh, because... oh yeah because zeros are considered blanks and, and vice versa they're they're interchangeable uh, which also can yeah. make certain equations tricky, especially when you really want to That's actually right. find blanks, um, and then yes. zeros get get false positives for that. Okay, so I think you're right. I, I think all three actually will will be resulting to that. Let, let's see. I could be wrong because I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. True. <laughs> yep. And that's, but that's only when it's an uh, integer uh, type. I think that this 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 happens. Um, obviously, with text. You know, then then the zero is uh, just tr treated as a character, not actually a number. Yeah, yeah. Well, technically, it could be a decimal, fixed decimal, whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Numeric value, it's, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, that's uh, what I wanted to uh, discuss today: the difference between blanks, zeros, and the fact that you don't need an if statement <laughs> to make so a I'll, number I'll actually... a zero. What what is your? Uh, it's been a minute since I've done this, so I've forgotten how I do it. But go back to your data uh, view, and in the scenario where you have an integer column and you actually have blanks and zeros, how do you? And you need to identify one versus the other. How would you do it then? Because clearly you can't just is check blank. Is blank going to work? Uh, but the is okay. The is blank against the integer column. Well, well, let's just add one more column then. Let's actually do is blank yeah, against that do. one. Yeah, or just or just change yeah, that I'm one. Yeah. I'm very confident that we'll yep. get true, true, false. Okay. Because I think that would be a good takeaway for people, because that can be a frustrating development process is just something equals blank, and like, why isn't this doing like what I'm asking it to do? So uh, this gives yeah. you a truer, truer result. Uh, I do think it's also, yeah, there you go. I, I do think it's, it is confusing because the IntelliSense for both is blank and just the blank function, there's nothing in the descriptions of them that allude to the fact that they operate differently, even though they do. So it, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it would be really nice if it if it had a bit of a hint of oh, by the way, is blank actually checks for x and y equals blank. You know, <laughs> the, the 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 IntelliSense and documentation could be a little bit better. But I, I do think this is a great takeaway for for people to to see all of this. And um, I think this is actually going to be a good file for for those watching, like d download this and just you know play around with it a bit. But I, I think this walks through a perfect scenario of the accounting for, for all of this stuff, especially when you are doing any type of uh, a calculation that requires a check for, for looking for these, uh, these occurrences. Yes, yes, filtering. Because see, a blank could be lack of data, and the zero could mm -hmm. be some legitimate value, and yep. they might not be the same, actually. So you're exactly. right. Cool. Yeah, uh, yeah th this was uh, good that I, I learned a little bit today, which is always nice uh, as well for a takeaway for me. So <laughs> thank you for this. Great. Uh, thanks, Reed. Absolutely. Until next time. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member. Last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below. So until next time.